All right, Marshy, um, this is for you. I'm doing this so you can figure out some PI stuff. So this is going to be one of my storm planets that I have going. Up here at the top, you're going to notice this maximum visible resource limit. As you scroll it around, you can see different colors of stuff kind of come and go. So what you got to figure out is what each planet's going to make. And I'm going to give you a list of things so that way you can just do it almost stupidly where you can figure one planet's going to go to that, one planet's going to go to this, and make it very, very, very easy. So as you see, my planet's very compact. Each of these extractor units, which are these deals with the long arms coming out of them, are very close to everything else, which is the factory. The longer that you have a Lynx, which is one of these dealies that actually connects the two buildings, the more power and CPU you will end up using. So you don't want to use a whole lot of it. So when you're looking at your placement, I tend to ignore the heavier set item, so the one that has more, and I look at the shittier one. And so when you first get to a planet, it's going to look just like that with the yellow, and you can kind of tell what the best areas are, but not really. So if you continue to scroll it so you can see the white, and you can kind of see where the best items are. As you see, when I do that, some areas are green. There's a little blotty patches here and there. There's a nice little bubble right there I could be hitting, but uh, I don't want to move my stuff. You want to get somewhere where not only is it wide enough for you to extract the one, but it's wide enough so you can extract the other. Now, when you're extracting them, you're going to notice current output cycles and all that crap. If I stop the program, it'll tell me per hour what's coming in down at this little corner over here. And then you just click install program. So once it's actually set up, you're just bloop, stop program, install program. And now every hour it cycles. Uh, you end up hitting submit and it does its thing. So once it's set up, it's very, 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 very easy. So the way my planets are set up is extractor to a silo to two basic uh, industry factories to one silo. And then these are two advanced factories to one spaceport. And so this is where the math comes in. So every two basic uh, factory units contribute half to each one of these advanced, uh, uh, advanced factory units. The other side of the equation are the other sides that are producing the other dealies. They also only produce half, so it fills in the other half to give you your fully produced item. So you go from T0, T1, to T2, to where you can actually haul it. And so that's going to be your, your basic setup on that side. As you see, you see these little lines going between the deals. Those, again, are going to be your uh, links that you create between them. The closer and tighter you are, the chances are the more of these little extractor pieces that you have. The more extractor pieces you have, the better. Once you have gotten your setup going, what I like to do with mine is trying to keep the current output cycles or when you're doing your initial stop and reset that your power, your program output is roughly the same. If you have one doing too much, it starts building up in this middle silo and it makes it kind of a pain in the ass to deal with. But aside from that, once you're done, you just exit planet mode. If I was hauling, customs office, access customs, it'll pop up as coolant. You go over there, hit transfer, and you just warp to the customs office and pick it up. You drag from there and put it into your cargo hold. It makes it ridiculously easy to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll my T3 to T4 planet stuff over. So this is Scope Trader. This is going to be my T3 to T4 planets. Right here, and again, these are just like I do all my other planets. I split them half and half. So one side over here is actually producing one wetware. The other side's producing another wetware per hour. So I'm making per planet two wetwares per hour. So that's roughly four and a half, five million per hour per planet I'm making, as long as they are continuously going. And some of the math on that is not always the best adding up. So you, on mine, I do a four-day cycle, for example. On my 
T, T1, T2 planets. These T3 and T4 planets are set up on 36 hour cycles because you can only fit 740 in of each of these items per, uh, per launch pad to make it work. So this setup is going to be a little bit harder and I'm actually going to have to pull you out and write this down sort of thing for you because it gets a little confusing. Which of the three will combine to make these two? Which of the three combine to make those two? Which of the three combine to make those two that go to your silo? And then those three different items, which are these guys, supercomputers, bioresearch, and cryoprotectant, that combine to make one wetware every hour. And that's your cycle time right there, if you didn't know. So your barren planets are really good for your T3, T4 items because we have a couple of them and there's no overlapping. Due to overlappage, like I was saying in our chat, you have to do fertilizer on a temperate planet on one tune. And on that same tune, your lava planet needs to be construction blocks. On an opposite tune, you'll be doing livestock on the temper and construct or consumer electronics on your lava. So that's four of the nine with two of your uh, two, two tunes. Two tunes does 10 planets. So the math right there, you need nine items to produce one wetware. And then you need one, one planet for that wetware production. There's your 10. So every two tunes, technically you will be doing one half of this setup. So, when you split them up like that, you have four doing those little deals. And then you have five other planets that you need to fill in. And those fill-ins, you can kind of fill in as you go. It's fine. Aside from that, it's just a lot of hauling, splitting up stacks, and then producing lots and lots of wetwares. I've got a lot of them, as you know. It's a very easy, just passive -isk. I don't work very hard to do it. There you go, buddy. <laughs>